Hello and welcome back to this launch control training series. Once again, I'm your host, Christian, with Mr. Chris Deal, the man behind all of the marketing here at Real Estate Funnel Systems for our clients. This training series today is going to cover how to create message templates within launch control. And not just how to create them, but how to create message templates that win, that convert, that get leads. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. Now, the next thing that you want to do when you're setting up your account is creating your message templates. And uh, this includes uh, something called spinner tokens, which I'm going to get into. Um, but again, if you use the link in our description and you go to our marketing bonus page, uh, this is going to get you access to some of our top performing message templates and some of our other stuff that we're going to use uh, in our accounts. Uh, and that'll just help you get started. So definitely don't forget to click that link below and get access to those bonuses. Yeah, and just so you know, those are huge because it's not just templates we've created using launch control. This is, we've been text message marketing for quite some time in different platforms. So this is just what works, period, as a message. And it's something you're definitely going to want to take advantage of. Totally. All right. So now the next thing we're going to look at is creating a message template. All right. So we already have message templates in here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I'm just going to go into one of these and we're going to hit edit just so you can kind of see. Now at the top here, you've got this bolded blue section. Uh, and this is just an important notice. It's going to tell you what's new, um, certain things that are necessary, uh, requirements of your templates, and it mentions mentions negative keywords. Okay. So there's a few things that are really important. Now the message templates, uh, one, the benefit of have, you want to have multiple message templates, um, that have different variations. And this is ultimately going to increase your deliverability rate and your efficiencies. And it's a significant time saver. Could you imagine if you had to text every single seller individually and you had to manually retype the initial text message every single time or copy and paste every single time um, could you imagine how much time that would take and waste um, which you know time is money in this business right so uh, these message templates are really important they're really valuable so definitely want to read through this uh, this may change between now and when you're actually watching this video so it's always important to watch this um, now, the first thing is you can create a uh, template title, uh, and this one is actually Rose Template Contest, and this is because what we do uh, with our team is we actually came up with a contest where each of our ISAs create their own template, and then over a period of time, we track the deliverability of those templates, and then whoever has the highest deliverability rate using their template uh, over their accounts uh, is actually going to win a bonus. So that's how we just continue upgrade and improve our uh, message templates and get new message templates. And we also get different variations, right? Uh, more unique things, things that maybe I haven't thought about or Christian hasn't thought about. Um, you know, this is just another uh, set of eyes that can come up with something, right? So uh, here you can see uh, in message one, and we're not going to go through all of these. We'll just go through a couple. Um, so you have, there's eight message templates. So you'll have SMS message one, two, three, four, then you'll have alternate message, and then you'll have AT&T SMS message one, two, and alternate message. And I'll tell you why those are important in a moment here. Um, but let's start with SMS message one. Um, now, the way this is set up is you have a couple different features. So essentially you have one basic message. Uh, but what's interesting is you have a couple words that are kind of the same or variations. And this is what I was referring to as spinner tokens. And so what this does is this creates variation within your messages that are being sent. So for example, this one says, hello, hey, with a smiley face and then hi. So what's going to happen is this software, if you send three messages, then the first message may be hello. The second message may be hi, and the third message may be hey with a smiley face. Okay, so it's going to alternate those through. Uh, the next key feature that you'll see is uh, the first name bracket. And 
there are buttons down here for you to integrate those different things like first name, last name, phone, alias, rep name. Uh, you can put emojis. Um, but what this does is this is going to take whatever the contact is. So if the first contact that you're messaging, if their first name is uh, William, then your message could say, hello, William, I'm, and then you'll have the next feature, which is alias rep name, and it'll say John or Rose or whoever your alias rep name is with company name, ABC properties. Uh, I'm looking to buy, and then it's got some dollar signs and cash, uh, some, and then here's another spinner token, homes, properties, places, or houses. So it's going to alternate through those in your area. Are you open in selling? And we're going to change that to selling uh, your place, home, house at property address with a little question mark and a guy who's kind of thinking, right? Now, a uh, couple things you're gonna notice here. Uh, there's a couple misspellings and you may think, oh, we made a mistake there, right? Um, well, going back to the negative keywords, right? If I change this and spell looking correctly and I click outside the box, you'll actually get an error message below that says this message contains the following negative keywords looking, right? And that goes back to the TCPA compliance. Now their spam is, their spam blockers are only so sophisticated. They can't get into the nuances of misspellings and everything. So if you still wanna use a specific word that is a negative keyword, just simply misspell it. And you can do that in this instance with a zero. Uh, or maybe you want to do two zeros so it actually looks, you know, even more, um, uh, more realistic, right? Um, so now it says I'm looking, right? Um, the other thing, same thing with selling, right? Selling is another negative keyword. So what we did is I typically has a line with a dot over it. Uh, an exclamation point is an I upside down, right? So throw in an exclamation point there. Get creative with that. Uh, now you want to avoid doing that a lot in one message because it just starts to look really bad. So, you know, if you have one or two here and there in a message, it's not too bad. But if every other word you're using is a negative keyword and you're just misspelling it to make it fit, uh, then it's going to start to look awkward. And that could have an impact on the person receiving it and them wanting to respond or not. Okay. Um, the other great thing about this is you can actually see your variations. So there's a button below that says C36 variations. So when I click on this over the top right, it's actually going to take all the spinner tokens that are in here and it's going to create each specific message that could possibly be generated using those spinner tokens. This way, the benefit of this is there might be times where a word in a spinner token makes sense, but in the context of the rest of the message, it might not. And so for you to verify that, it's always good to go through and read all of the different variations so you can determine, like, does this actually sound like legitimate language that somebody is going to use and will it elicit a response? All right. So you can scroll through and you can look at all these different variations and just make sure that everything matches up. Uh, one interesting thing to note uh, that there was no training on that nobody told us or that I just figured out through uh, trial and error is that the spinner tokens are not just relegated to individual words. You can actually use phrases there. Uh, so there may be an example of that uh, somewhere in here. We'll take a look. Uh, I don't think there is in this particular template, uh, but you can use uh, multiple words in your spinner tokens. So you could say, hey there, or, um, you know, homes in, uh, you know, or things like that. So you can change it around. So uh, there's some variations where you might have um, offers or selling, and then the rest of the context of the sentence might not make sense. But if you change the sentence just a little bit and you say offers on or um, inquiries in your house, something like that. I don't know. You, you can figure it out as you're going through and creating these message templates. Um, so that's the template process there. Um, now, again, it's the same thing for SMS, text message one, two, three, and four. 
same process. Uh, then you get down to the alternate message. Now the alternate message is used in a situation where let's say your list for whatever reason is missing information. Let's say it's missing property information or homeowner information, but you have a phone number that you can text, right? You wouldn't be able to put in first name or property address. So this is a message. The alternate messages are used when we're missing data. Okay, um, so you would just create that message template. It's gonna be very rarely used, so it's not super significant. Uh, just depends on the lists that you're pulling, uh, but is it, it is important to have those available. And same thing with the AT&T alternate message. Uh, and then why are there SMS messages specifically for AT&T? Well, one thing is when we go back up to these other messages, so this particular message, is set, message says, I am alias rep name, and in this case, it's Rose. I think there's a period there um, with company name. So what we're going to do is we're going to, copy this and delete it. Okay. I'm Rose. I'm looking to buy some homes. Now, if I click outside of the box, I get no errors at all, right? That's totally fine to do. So I'm going to put that back in because I don't want to make that edit. But if we go down to the AT&T messages, if I delete this company name, and I click outside, alias rep name and or company name is missing. So AT&T is the one carrier that requires you to use alias rep name as well as the company. So you can, you have to have both of them. You can't just have one or the other. Okay. Um, so it's very important to make sure that your messages include that. Um, so we'll just fix this back up. It should be good there. All right, perfect. So that's basically it for the message templates. And again, utilize this up here, the blue box with all of the specifics. Um, just know that you know you have to have eight messages. There's five regular uh, and then three AT&T uh, and the alternate messages. Each message except for the alternate message must contain at least two spinner tokens and to those two spinner tokens, you can have more, but the at least two of those spinner tokens must have at least three different elements. So, hey, hi, hi there, um, looking, seeking, uh, searching, um, things like that. And then AT&T messages must contain alias rep name and alias company name, and that's mandatory. Um, Let's see. And then, of course, going back to uh, not using negative keywords. Um, so that's essentially the message template. Uh, so let me save this. And what you're going to do to create your new message template is at the top right, uh, there's a button that says create new message template. And then you'll have blank sections to do that. And you won't be able to save a message template if there's anything wrong with it. Any type of errors will not allow you to save that message template. So you won't be able to save a message template that's not gonna actually function. And there was one more thing that we discovered that's noteworthy. And that is the more templates you have, the better, rather than having 30 different spinner tokens. You need a minimum of three for each occurrence, but you know you might think that that would increase your deliverability rate. And I mean, ostensibly it might. However, in terms of what we have discovered is more message templates are better than a massive amount of spinner tokens in any given message template. Yep. Yeah, actually, that was a change that launch control uh, implemented not too long ago. So originally, uh, you could have, uh, you know, a few message templates with, you know, a thousand different variations. You know, for example, if we go back in and we edit this, it'll tell you how many different variations there are. And we had some where they had a hundred variations, uh, you know, a thousand variations because we put a lot of spinner tokens in there with the goal of creating a lot of variability to increase our overall deliverability rating. Uh, and then what launch control did, uh, which I believe is an effort to help the clients because I think many clients were not doing that. They were using the minimum amount of variations. And so they were starting to get flagged as spam. So what 
launch control implemented was you cannot use any template uh, for more than 300 messages per day. Uh, so what we figured out was that if your total template has more than 300 variations total, then it's useless, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter anything above and beyond that. Um, and even less than that, right? Because you're not going to be able to send it to more than 300 people. So if you had a scenario where you have multiple different spinner tokens, like this particular one has three different spinner tokens, um, we could probably eliminate one of those. Um, but it would be better to take that and cut those spinner tokens essentially in half, as long as two of them have at least three um, words, and then just create a new template using some of those other words um, with the same message. And then that would help us there. So um, get creative with it, keep an eye on it. And launch control will actually display an alert. Uh, so if you get to, if you've already sent 300 messages using one template, it'll tell you, hey, you've already used this template for 300. Uh, you can't use this template anymore today. Uh, and then also um, there's other warnings when you're creating templates. If they're very similar to other templates, uh, there's a warning that'll come up and it'll tell you, hey, this message template is very similar to these other message templates. You might want to make some changes. It'll still let you create that message template, even if there is a lot of similarity, um, but it'll at least notify you and then you can determine if you want to make any uh, modifications to that. Well, that's going to do it for this training. We have another one coming up. In fact, there's going to be a training popping up right around this area, and you can click on that and learn more about launch control. I really appreciate you sticking with us. Look, don't forget to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and feed us with comments. Let us know what you thought because we do value your feedback and we do this because we'd like you to get some value from these videos. So if you did, please let us know and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.